Pied Piper by Black Hole CA. Chapter 21 Sunspot We've caught movement outside the house. Someone moving alone. The voice of a hero crackles through the speaker. Has the operation already begun? What? Namasa's head whips towards the radio they've set up in the police surveillance van. No one should be moving yet. They've scaled the wall. They're approaching the house. The hero hisses through the speaker. The detective curses. Who is it? I'll have their license suspended if the operation goes south because of them. It's no one I'd recognize. They're carrying a staff. The... They've entered the house and are now engaged in combat. A staff. Namasa breathes, eyes widening. What kind of staff? It wasn't a pipe, was it? The speaker crackles to life again. It's hard to see, but it's possible. Sugachi so pushes himself up quickly as he turns to Nighteye and his intern. We need to move now. It's gotta be Piper. Mr. Brave, please keep an eye on him. Detective, Sir says, fingers folding in front of his face. We can't move yet. A majority of the team isn't in position. If it's Piper, then he'll have to hold out for a while longer. Nighteye! The man exclaims. Piper isn't any older than Lamellian. The speaker crackles to life again. They're dragging out two individuals now? Both have been restrained. He's my age. Namasa's eyes snap towards the hero's intern, a grim look in his eyes as he nods. We can't just leave him in there, then. Mirio turns towards the older hero. I've at least had training for situations like this. Nighteye sighs. The fact that the boy has made it this far is a testament to his skill. Everyone should be in position soon. He'll have to hold out until then. The target is entering the building again! Piper disappeared for almost an entire week before showing up at my doorstep. Nomasa cuts in. He never disappears without a reason. There's a strong possibility that he could still be recovering from wounds that we don't know about. This is dangerous for more than just him, Sir states, gaze hardening. Rushing in could put lives on the line. Kogane raises his head at the vigilante's appearance. He looks only half-conscious, exhaustion pulling at the lines on his face. More gold, he murmurs, still partially asleep from judging his muted reaction. You. She's not the only one who needs saving, right? Midoriya curses. I didn't think you'd be here. Forgive me. The vigilante strides towards the bed. The action rouses the man as he quickly pushes himself up. Let's go. Your sister's waiting on you. Piper tells him quietly, offering the man his outstretched hand. Kugane's eyes widen at the mention of his sister. Who are you? You're not with the others. I I'm not, the boy assures him. I'm a vigilante. Your family's been worried about you. Piper's outstretched hand doesn't waver. Getting Kogane out is now one of his top priorities. He still needs to search the rest of the house before he'll be able to leave, but this man has suffered too. 
Making sure he got away is just as important. They could be keeping her in the attic. Now one officer the other day mentioned there being an attic. If she's as important to them as they're making her out to be, then Kagane could be a decoy to make people think there's no one else being held here. Midori's eyes flicker towards the door, watching for movement and listening for any sounds in the rest of the house. There's a woman passed out on the couch, and I've got two guys tied up out back. If we're going to get you out of here, then now would be the best time. It's only three. Giza murmurs. Midoriya glances back at him. What? Usually there's one more. His fingers tighten around his staff. Is it a little girl? Uh, someone else they're keeping captive. What? The man looks confused. No, you said the woman was asleep, so it'd be a guy. An adult. And I, I don't think they're keeping anyone else here. The vigilante's heart falls. So, there's not a little girl that stays here. H have you ever heard her mentioned? Uh, her name is Eddie. She's got white hair and... A voice cuts the boy off from the hallway. It seems a rat has found its way in. The vigilante whips around towards the door, already on the defensive at the sound of the unknown voice. Fraternizing with the enemy, are we, Kogane? Life's just full of surprises, huh? Setsuno-san. Gizo stutters. A beak mask stares back at the duo from the doorway, freezing the fifteen-year-old's heart. Memories of that night surface unwillingly, fed by his inner demons. Because of that... Because of that, I can't say that I particularly hate you, Mr. Vigilante. Overhaul warned us that you might show up, looking for something that doesn't belong to you. But remember this, child. If you come looking for my things again, you'll find that any usefulness you may have once had will have run out. The mask is different, and the man it's attached to is different as well. The blonde of his hair is the antithesis to the dark, feathery strands he was witness to some weeks ago. Midoriya's heart slowly unclenches. But that fear is still there, still thriving beneath the gaze of that beak-like mask. I didn't think you'd have the guts to show up, after what he said he did to you. Midoriya doesn't have time to hesitate. Even with the sun flaring with the fear of death in his chest, he can't afford to falter. He can't afford to lose with Kogane still sitting behind him. For both their sakes. For Eddie's sake. For the sake of everyone else he plans to save after this. The vigilante brings his staff up, aiming his attack at the underside of the villain's chin. Setsuno steps back with a practiced ease, avoiding the blow as he draws the katana sheath at his waist, taking up his own defensive position. I won't be underestimating you. That's unfortunate, the fifteen-year-old says, with more confidence than he feels. It would have been nice to see your shocked face when I kick your ass. Well... He pauses, feigning to think it over. I guess I'll still get a chance to see that. You're holding yourself up to quite the standard, aren't you? Saying so easily that you're going to beat me. Got to be confident. I've got people counting on me, you know. <laughs> That's for sure. I'll be counting on you to die for me then. 
Midoriya dodges the first swing of the katana, dancing away from the blade. Swords are dangerous weapons, ones that are meant to keep your opponent at a distance. There's a sharp screech of metal against metal, as Setsuno parries the vigilante's next blow. Months of playing at vigilanteism have gotten Midoriya uncomfortably close with the usage of quirks. Weapons, on the other hand, were a rarer sight to see. He dealt with plenty of bow staves in the dojo, and it wasn't uncommon to find a criminal wielding a small knife, if their quirks weren't suited for the situation. But the vigilante can't say that he's ever faced off against someone who knew how to use a katana before. Just treat it like a bow staff, he tells himself, trying to calm his racing heart. A very sharp, very deadly bow staff. He lures the man further into the room, watching from the corner of his eye as Gizo hastily stands hiding along the wall, staying out of the way of the two's clashing weapons. Midoriya urges the man towards the door with a jerk of his head. Midoriya slips past another swing of the villain's blade. He gives Kogane a nod of assurance as the man pauses at the room's doorway. The back door! The vigilante calls over the clash of metal. Kogane gives the fifteen-year-old a silent nod that he doesn't see before he disappears out the door. Satsuno's blade flashes in the dark, another screech of metal filling the room as Piper deflects the blur. You can't play defense forever now, Mr. Vigilante, and sending him off on his arm? There's more than just me here. The boy grits his teeth. Please be safe. Suddenly, a call goes up from the living room, the voice of a woman echoing down the hall. Heroes! Heroes are outside! Everyone is in place. Begin the operation, Mr. Brave, Cycler, and Rocklock through the front. The assigned police personnel will follow them in. Remaining support heroes, make sure you keep the house circled, and be ready to offer assistance and capture anyone who tries to flee. Naito's voice crackles through the team's radio comms. He turns towards Namasa. Take Lamellian with you, and go through the back. Once we breach the front, wait 90 seconds before going in. If you run into Piper, you're probably the only one with a chance of convincing him to stand down, peacefully. Setsuno freezes at the warning cry, eyes snapping towards the hall. The vigilante takes his chance, jamming the end of his staff into the man's diaphragm. If the heroes are here, then I don't have time to be fighting like this. The villain hunches over with a wheeze of pain, and Midoriya slams his elbow into the man's exposed back. He can't tell how much damage it does, but he takes his chance to dart out of the room to follow behind Kogane. There's chaos in the living room. The woman from earlier is wide awake now, staring determinedly at the door, her hands glowing yellow as she presses them against it. There's banging coming from the other side of the door, blows hard enough to shake in its frame. Setsuno-san! She shouts. I can't hold them back much longer. Midoriya can hear the strain in her voice. The vigilante continues to sprint for the kitchen. I need to get out of here. I can't afford to get caught. They'll be able to check the rest of the house for Eddie. He skids into the kitchen, eyes spotting Gizor as he tries desperately to pry the back door open. Open it! Piper shouts, closing the distance between them. I can't! Midoriya's eyes jerk back towards the living room. A quirk. He mumbles. 
The vigilante catches movement in the shadows of the living room, and quickly shoves Kogane into the corner next to the back door. A warning of, Stay down! on his tongue, as he dodges a swing from his opponent's katana. She sure has a great quirk, right? It's really useful like this. Sad thing is that it can only be used in a small house like this. But as long as she's still standing, no one can get in, Setsuno says, smile rising behind his beak-like mask. And no one can get out. We're on lockdown, Piper. And before time runs out, I'm gonna make sure I kill you properly this time. Midoriya feels ice in his veins, before he quickly takes the defensive. The vigilante counters a blow from the villain's sword and a swing of his pipe. There's one thing I have to do tonight, the man breathes. It's make sure that your dead body ends up in the news tomorrow. That's the least I can do to thank Chisaki-san. He gave trash like me purpose. So I'll kill all the heroes here and repay him. A man knows no kindness, Midoriya hisses, shifting his stance to one of attacking. He kills too easily, hurts others too easily. The vigilante sends another jab with his pipe towards the man's stomach. The villain slips around the blow just in time, dodging the worst of the damage, though the staff still scrapes past his side. Setsuno lets out a grunt of pain as a smile twitches at his lips. I can do that too. The villain jabs his sword forward, faster than the fifteen-year-old can pull back from his previous attack. Unlike with the vigilante's attack, the katana lands center mass. Midoriya can feel its impact, can feel the fear of death flare up burning star-like in his chest. He's scared of dying again. It hurts. But with the boy's bulletproof vest, the wound will do nothing more than a bruise. Satsuno looks surprised, brows rising. A quirk. The vigilante lets the man believe what he will. The fear of dying still burns hot in his throat, but succumbing to it would mean death. The boy works deftly, grabbing one of his escrima sticks at his waist and quickly pulls it up, connecting it with that of the sword still pressed against his chest. Setsuno sees it coming, letting go of his weapon and avoiding the electrocution. Would have been better if he dodged, Midoriya thinks as the sword falls to the ground. But he's weaponless now, so it's still a decent outcome. Izuku quickly slips the Eskrima stake back into his belt, as he kicks the sword away, sending it skittering across the tiled floor, far out of reach of his opponent. The vigilante takes up a fighting stance, as the villain charges at him, staff ready to strike out at any moment, until it disappears from his grasp. Satsuno is still covering the distance between them. When Midoriya watches the pipe disappear from his grasp and materialize instantly in his opponent's hands. His quirk. Midoriya scowls, but merely shifts his stance to a more defensive one. You act like I need a weapon to kick your ass. The vigilante dodges a swing from his stolen staff and slips past a clumsy imitation of his previous jab. He hasn't teleported his katana back to him. Is there a reason he can't? Midoriya slides one of the eskrima sticks from his belt and watches as the villain's eyes hone in on it. Satsuno drops one hand away from the pipe, and almost instantly, the weapon disappears from the vigilante's grasp, fingers clenching around nothing but air. 
Can he only use the quirk when the object is in someone's hand? What about eyesight? Does that have anything to do with it? The villain tosses the weapon over his shoulder, and Midori watches it clatter to the far side of the room. Didn't you say that you didn't need a weapon to kick my ass? Midoriya ignores the taunt. Where's the girl? Satsuno instantly picks up on the topic of conversation, a caustic grin creeping across the man's face. You'll never find her. Even if I told you exactly where she is, there'd be nothing you could do. So you know where she is? Midoriya's hand reaches for one of the smoke grenades attached to his belt. That's all I needed to know. The vigilante pulls the ring from the canister, but keeps his fingers clenched around the handle and release trigger. The villain's eyes catch on the object in his hand, and within seconds, the grenade is in the other's grasp, handle no longer held down. I was hoping you'd do that. There's a small pop before verdant smoke begins flooding the room. Team A has broken through, now engaging the enemy. Namasa turns towards Lamelia, counting the seconds. There's a nervous worry that presses against his chest, but there's determination clear in his eyes. Get ready. We'll be going in soon. The vigilante spins, sending a spiked boot flying for the man's face, as the sounds coming from the living room get louder. The villain dodges as expected, leaning back to avoid the blow as the beak mask takes the brunt of it instead. But the spikes catch in the leather, dragging the man with the downward swing of his leg until the mask's clasp breaks, and Setsuno stumbles back. A mix of grim determination and anger settle over the man's features as the mask falls lifelessly to the floor, a small knife sliding out of it and skittering across the kitchen tiles. The vigilante releases a war cry that sounds more desperate than intimidating as he charges forward, slamming his fist into the man's jaw with enough force to break it. The villain stumbles, legs turning doughy beneath the blow, stars overtaking his vision. Midoriya takes his chance, knocking the feet out from under his opponent and dropping down with him. Tell me where she is! He shouts, voice breaking as he throws another punch at Setsuno's face. Where is she? He screams. The fear he's felt and the frustration and the anger and the powerlessness he's faced rises within his chest. They act as fuel for his son making it burn brighter, hotter. So hot that Izuku can't stand it. He feels tears welling, blurring his vision. They sizzle against his cheeks as his insides burn, the build-up of every emotion he's felt over the past two months. He burns with the culmination of all his righteous fury. Where is she? He screams again, throwing a third punch at Setsuno's face, and then another, and another. Again and again. He bloodies the man's face and breaks the man's jaw. Where is she? Tsukauchi, Lamellion, you're clear to enter. Copy that. Namasa nods in Murio's direction. The two can hear shouting coming from the inside of the house now and Mirio quickly activates his quirk, facing his head through the door to survey the situation. He pulls back. The room is filled with green smoke, possibly a quirk. There seems to be some sort of fight going on towards the centre of the room, and there's another person cowering near the door. He's wearing quirk suppressant cuffs, so the possibility of it being a detained villain is high. Tsukachi gives a stern nod, before turning the knob 
and throwing the door open. Beneath his gloves, the skin of the vigilante's knuckles bruise and break and bleed. Namasa steps into the kitchen, weapon drawn in preparation of a fight. The smoke is thick green, but as soon as the door opens, it begins flooding out into the cold night air. The detective covers his mouth and nose with the inside of his elbow, trying to see through the verdant haze. Lamellian. He calls over the sound of fighting from the other rooms, gesturing towards Kogane, who still cowers in the corner. Get that guy out of here! The teen nods, lifting the man up bridal style before slipping back out. Through the smoke, he can see a pipe laying on the floor, and Sakauchi feels his heart speed up. Piper. Then, the dissipating haze of green, he sees him. Piper! He shouts. Piper! Namasa takes a step closer, coughing as he calls the boy's name. Midoriya's fists slow to a halt as he straddles the villain beneath him, breathing laboured. The fifteen-year-old slowly leans back to stare at the damage wrought by his trembling hands. The teen looks towards Namasa, blood splattered across his mask and his gloves in his face, and everything is the same colour as that vibrant scarlet eye. She's not here, is all he says. She's not here. I don't know where she is if she's not here. He won't tell me. The detective lowers his weapon. He's never seen the vigilante look so human before. He's never seen him look quite so boyish. He won't tell me. Izuku stumbles his way up, numbly grabbing at his staff as he goes. She's not here, he repeats. This time, more to himself. Somewhere else, then. The vigilante turns, making to leave. Piper! Nomasa calls after him. But the boy doesn't stop. Piper! The detective says again, raising his weapon with the name. I'm placing you under arrest. The boy pauses, turning to glance over his shoulder. For what? He asks despondently. For saving people? I can't even protect that one little girl. What makes you think I can save anyone? The detective falters at the words, caught off guard. How could I have done any of the things that you're about to accuse me of when I can't even do this right? The vigilante stares at the floor, pied eyes dull. He raises a gloved hand, studying the blood glinting beneath the kitchen lights. He clenches it into a fist, a new light flaring to life in his eyes. Namas has never seen such foreboding light in the eyes of someone so young. If you're going to arrest me for something, then it should be for the crimes I'm going to commit. The boy here says. I'm going to hunt that bastard to the ends of the earth, if that's what it takes to save her. He should have kept me dead. Midoriya spits, lips pulled into a sneer behind his mask. I won't let him have her. I won't be so weak next time. The man doesn't know what 
it is that keeps him in place, watching as the boy turns, walking out the door. It's only the low groan that the detective hears from behind him that snaps him out of it. He slides his weapon back into its holster, and drops down onto one knee to inspect the injured man. Tsukauchi grimaces at the sight. The vigilante strides out of the house, eyes immediately honing on a few support heroes who have taken over the backyard. He addresses them directly. Detective Nomasa needs backup, ASAP. One of the villains has been taken down and needs immediate restraints and medical attention. Right. One hero nods before quickly jogging past him, hands already wrapped around a pair of quirk-suppressant cuffs, like the ones they all cut off him. There was another man inside. Someone should have brought him out already. He's been held captive by the precepts for the last six months. Please make sure he's taken care of. His living conditions while he was with them are unclear. One of the support hero's eyes widen in shock. I I'll go inform the others. Everyone assumed he was one of the villains. The vigilante nods. Please, take care of it. Another hero approaches the boy. It's someone he recognizes, but as he is now, he can only remember that she's a support hero. Uh, are you injured? She asks, eyes rimming his figure for damage. She must lock onto the splattering of blood on his face, because she immediately turns to a hero that he only remembers the quirk of. Some type of costly hearing quirk. Self, can you- I'm fine. The vigilante cuts in. The fight is winding down, but it's not over. There may be people worse off than me. Save your strength. Uh, uh hi. Midoriya makes to stride past them. Where are you going, though? I've got information to give to everyone up front, is all the boy says, before he's disappearing around the corner. Do you know who that was? No idea. Maybe it was Night Eye's intern. I thought that was the kid who carried the other guy out, though. Namasa bursts out of the house, eyes hardened with determination. Where's Piper? Tsukachi finds no one but the startled group set to guard the backyard, and curses. The detective strides towards the nearest hero. The vigilante with the pipe. Where is he? Did you already catch him? Is he with the police already? V vigilante? The man stutters, eyes widening as he turns to look at where the boy had disappeared. I, I thought he was one of us. He, he said he had a report to give to everyone out front. Tsukachi curses, hand running violently through his hair. Why did I let him leave? He was right in front of me. He brings his walkie-talkie up to his mouth. I need an immediate APB out on Piper. He should still be out in the area. Don't let him get away. <laughs> 